Hi. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sticking around, even with a little bit of delay. Uh, I had to set up a new live stream at the last minute, uh, which if you happen to see the previous uh, link, you will know that. But it's all fixed now, so now we can play some tunes and have some fun with that. I really appreciate you tuning in and joining us. I know there's a lot going on in the world and in our state and everywhere, so I really appreciate you taking the time to play some music. It's good for us. All right, some housekeeping stuff, and I'm going to look at my notes just to make sure I don't forget anything. Okay, I have my backup fiddle today because my other violin is in the shop. So this is what is called a cricket travel fiddle, and... It is really nice for playing outside and for when my regular instrument is in the shop. And I have a little note from my helper. Yes. Okay. So that's all good. Just making sure things are going all right. All right. And then... Let's see what else. Okay. At the old link, I had... Uh, or at the old live stream, I had a link in the description box set up uh, to a website where you can download the sheet music. But since we had to set up a new live stream, I don't have that link in the description box. However, if you go to the website fiddlingfossilist.com, you will be able to find those materials. You'll want to click on videos and then... Um, there's one entry for videos and that's this workshop and there'll be links to sheet music in a PDF file and also a suggested listening list that has a list of tracks and albums. So I will share that link again and I will try to write it out for you, but it's F I D D L I N G F O S S I L I S T dot com fiddling fossilist. All right, and then again, we do have a chat feature on this live stream. If you have a Google account, you can log into a Google account and chat and ask questions, and I will be monitoring that throughout this workshop. So feel free to do that. That's optional. Also, you can email me if you have any questions. Again, at fiddlingfossilist.com, there's a contact page, and that has my email address. Also, this YouTube channel, uh, if you click on the About tab, there is also a way to contact me there. So there are several ways you can contact me if you have questions. Okay, let's dive into tunes. So, here's my A. Okay. What I have in mind today to do is to teach a couple of jigs, and these are going to be in Scottish style. This is Scottish Fiddling Workshop. So we have a jig called the Hills of Glenorchy, and we have a jig called Mrs. McGee. And the first one, uh, these are both very old tunes. So the first one, I think, appeared in 1765, and the second one is first known from a collection in 1805. So these are old, and they are Scottish jigs. Um, let's see. They're, neither of them are in a major key. The first one's in E minor, and then the second one is in G mixolydian, which is kind of in between major and minor. And I think I'll just go ahead and play those two, and then we'll go into learning them. Thank you. 
Okay, so those are our tunes. And what we'll do is go ahead and dive into the hills of Glenorchy. Now, uh, when you see the sheet music, if you do download that, um, you know, you'll see tunes in, you'll see that the tune is written out in 6-8 time, uh, a lot of eighth notes. But as in other types of folk music, we don't play them exactly as written, which is why it is excellent to learn by ear to pick up the style. And so instead of, you know, if we were going to just write, play what's written in the sheet music, for example, we might play them all even, which I can't even do right at the moment. But we're going to put a little bit of a lilt into it. The first note of each group of three is a little bit longer, and the second one's a little bit shorter. So that's something to keep in mind as you're playing these jigs. Okay, so the first phrase. Um, let me just play the whole A part of the Hills of Glenorchy, and then uh, we'll do the first phrase. So here's the whole A part. That's the entire A part. There are several repeated phrases there, which makes the tune easier to learn. And so here is the first phrase. We'll break that A part up into four phrases. So here's the first one. I'll play it, and then you try playing it as well. So now you try. And let's do that again. Okay, and here's the next one. Go ahead and try that. And here it is again. Okay, one thing I want to mention, let's, well, first of all, let's play those two pieces together. So we have a little pickup note, that D note. Okay, now the thing I wanted to mention, where we have two notes, a quarter note and an eighth note, that happens right at the beginning. In some cases, I am hooking those two notes together in one bow, like that. Could do it there. And then on the next phrase. So that hooked bowing can be used where you have the quarter eighth note rhythm, and you can also mix it up and separate them at times. Okay, let's review what we already have. We have two phrases of the A part. Okay, let's try that one more time. Is it all right if I click to get the comments? Mm -hmm. I have a helper here with me, so <laughs> I just realized I can't see the comments, so now I can see them. All right, so now we're going to try the first half of the A part again. Here we go. Okay, so first half of the A part. Now, the second half of the A part, here's how it goes. Let me play that again a little slower. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the second half of the A part. We can break that up into two bits, just like we did for the first half of the A part. So here is the first, uh, here's the, th the third phrase of the A part, basically. Okay, now one thing about that, it's, it's essentially, it's almost the same as the very first phrase we learned. It's just one note different, that E note, because in the, the very first phrase, we go down to the B. But in this third phrase, we go up to the E. So let me do that third phrase again, and then you give it a try. Okay, now that wants to go somewhere, and here's what happens. This is the last phrase of the A part. And I'll do that one again. Okay. Now let's put those two together for the second half of the A part. Okay, so basically what's happening, if you are kind of looking at the contour of the melody, you reach kind of a high point in the middle of that, those two phrases, and then it goes back down to end at a lower point. Okay, now let's see what we can remember of the A part. I am going to play the entire A part once, and then I'll play it again a little bit slower, and then you can join in. So here it is, the whole A part. Okay, now I'm going to play it again a little bit slower, and then after that, go ahead and give it a try. So here it is a little bit slower, the entire A part. So that's the A part. Give it a try. Okay, so you may have noticed I'm doing some hammer-ons. If you were in my April workshop, then we, we went over what a hammer-on was. That video is available on this channel if you want to review that. But uh, within the first phrase and the third phrase. Okay, that's a hammer on where you have, you play a small note below into the note that you're going to. So let's see, getting into that. Okay, so that's a place where you can put a hammer on. Another one in the third phrase. another hammer on. Okay, so we have the A part. Let's go on to the B part. I will play the B part once and then we'll break it up again into four different pieces. So here we go. So there are, in this part as well, there are more repeated phrases, uh, things where you have similar melodic ideas and you just have little variations on them, which is actually really helpful to learning these types of tunes. So for the first 
chunk of the B part. Here it is. I'll play it and then go ahead and give it a try. And here it is again. And moving on from there, here's the second chunk of the B part. And let me do that again a little slower. So we're starting on the D note. Let's try it out. Okay, now those two pieces together, the first two phrases of the B part, they sound like this. I'm going to play it a at a kind of a slow tempo. Go ahead and give it a try after I'm done. So here we go. Try it out. Okay, a word about ornamentation. There's another place where you can do a hammer-on at the end of the first phrase. So from the E note to the F sharp. And then I put a flick at the end of the second chunk of the B part here. So. I'm flicking on the F sharp note with my second finger. And again, I talked about flicks in that April workshop, so that could be something that you could go back and review if you would like a refresher on that. Okay, so uh, let me play the entire B part and then we will learn the third and fourth chunks and then we'll have the whole tune. So here is the entire B part. So in that B part, you will notice that the third phrase is identical to the first phrase. So you are, um, you basically know that third chunk already. So let's just review it. So this is the third part of the B part. And let me do that one more time a little slower. Try it out. Okay, and then to finish it off, so the end of the B part, here we go. And let me do that again. We're starting on the D note again. So on that phrase, we have the same thing that we had to end the A part. So it's this phrase. Let me do that again. So we have some repeated phrases that make it, that help us out in learning this tune. Okay, let's try the entire B part. So here we go with the entire B part. I'm going to do it again a little bit slower. The entire B part. Here we go. Again.
have it the entire B part. You may have noticed on some of these repeated notes, for example, the very first part of the B part, because we have two E's in a row, I put a little flick between those two E's just to break it up. And then I'm putting it in the same bow. That's an option. Um, another option is where you can put the hammer on, you can also do a little turn. So, in, again, in that first phrase of the B part, but the second bar of it. So you can either do a hammer on, or you can do a little turn that sounds like this. And what I am doing just kind of using my fingers to do a little waterfall sounding ornament. Okay, so now let's see if we can go back and remember the A part. Uh, let's play the entire tune through. So we're gonna do two A's and two B's. And this, this uh, live stream is being recorded, so it'll be available on this channel in a few hours after we're done. So you can go back and review. Okay, so Hills of Glenorchy, the entire tune, um, with the repeats. So here we go. So there is the Hills of Glenorchy. I mentioned in the emails that I sent out that we're going to be turning one of these jigs into an air. And this is the one that we're going to turn into an air. So how do we do that? There are some tunes that sound very nice, either slow, or medium, or fast. And this is one of those. So to change it into an air, there are a couple things we need to do. Um, first, we're going to change the feel of it from a 6-8 kind of bouncy jig feel to a more smooth, not quite waltz, but an air in three. So we're going to smooth out the rhythm a bit, and we're going to slow down the ornamentation. Those are the, the two kind of main changes that we're going to make to this tune. And then we're going to add, as I mentioned, some slower ornaments. So you've got the building blocks that you need to play this as an air. We're just going to slow it down. So just let's just try it out. I will play it through first and then um, maybe point out a few things and then we'll try it again. So here it is.
a lot of what I did there was just slowing it down and smoothing it out, getting that feel in three instead of six, eight. And then also on the ornamentation, using smoother and a little bit slower ornaments, and then also doing more of the turns. And slowing them down a little bit. So those are some things that you can do in order to change how this tune sounds and to play it as an air. Okay, if anybody has questions, if you're logged into a Gmail account, you can use the chat. And again, feel free to email me. I know this was a little bit crazy getting this workshop started. I thank you so much for staying with me. Um, I really appreciate it. So let's now take a quick stretch break. So this instrument is actually plugged in. This has this Cricut violin, so I have to kind of mind the cord here. But let's take a quick stretch break. So find a safe place to put your instrument. And I'm not actually going to stand up, but I encourage you to stand up. Um, we'll do a little bit of stretching out. And I wanted to mention this workshop is a project for me. And these workshops that I've been doing, um, the last one was very graciously sponsored by Utah Old Time Fiddlers. This one, I, I enjoyed doing the last one so much that I decided to do them on my own. And so I actually don't have any sponsors for this. But I do have a place if you enjoyed what you saw or if you're, you know, if you're enjoying learning the tunes and wish to contribute to the cause. I didn't have time to make a link for this, but I'm going to hold it up to the screen. Um, feel free to throw a couple dollars in the tip jar, but uh, there is no obligation whatsoever. So if you're not in a position to do this or, you know, for whatever reason, do not wish to, no obligation at all. But if you would like to chip in, that's how you can do it. All right. So I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, so that's wide open. If you have any questions, now's the time or any time because you can contact me via email. All right, that was the Hills of Glenorchy. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I do have a file, not only of the sheet music, so there's, there are two resources you can use and those are available at my website, fiddlingfossilist.com. F-I-D-D-L-I-N-G-F-O-S-S-I-L-I-S-T. -I, I had to think about that a little bit. Fiddlingfossilist.com. And uh, click on videos, and then you'll see a link for today's video with the old live stream link. But at any rate, uh, that doesn't matter because what is over there has not changed. So you'll be able to find a link for the sheet music, so written out. And then you'll also be able to find a link for listening, suggested listening resources. So albums that these tunes are on, including uh, The Hills of Glenorchy as an air, and including um, also Hills of Glenorchy is sometimes played in A minor, and it, that's a nice sound too, so that's something else you can experiment with, and as well as the next tune that we're going to learn. And yes, okay, good. We have our first question. Yay. Yes, this this video will be this live stream will be posted at this YouTube channel that you are watching at. So yes, and it conveniently happens to be named Fiddling Fossilist as well. So hopefully that makes it easy. <laughs> um, yes, it will be available. Okay, let's move on to the next tune which is called Mrs. McGee. This is also an old Scottish jig. And this, we actually know who wrote this. This was written by a blind fiddler named John Riddell. I hope I'm saying his name right. But anyway, uh, and it was first, it's first known from a collection that was published in 1805. 
So it's an old one. It's a good one. And this one likes to move. So as you learn it, it's a lot of fun to play it fast. But first, we're going to learn it slow. Uh, let's see. This is also a popular tune in Cape Breton. I have to make sure I don't tangle myself in this chord. Okay. I think we're good now. All right. So we're going to go from E minor to G mixolydian. And don't worry too much about the mixolydian. It just makes it sound, it makes, it's a kind of a cool scale that makes a nice um, backdrop for folk tunes. Okay. So. Right off the bat, we have two long notes. So we have two dotted quarter notes. And those are fun to play drones and things on, but we'll get more into that in a, in a little bit. I gotta get my other notes here so I remember all the things I want to say about this tune. Oh, also, I, in the recordings uh, list at, my, at the fiddlingfossilist.com website, I also link to, or I also mention a version of this tune that is played in G minor, which is also a very nice change from the G mixolydian. So we don't have time to get into that variation today, but that's another thing that you can check out. Okay, so Mrs. McGee, this is a tune, um, you may have encountered this, where the B parts are not the same. So you can see, you'll, in the sheet music, sometimes you'll see it written as the B part having a first and second ending, like the first four bars will be the same, but then the endings will be different. This is one of those kind of tunes, and but it will make sense as we get to that part. All right, so the A part. Let's learn the A part. And again, watch for those repeated phrases to help learn it. Okay, so here's the A part. I'm going to play the entire A part, and then again, we'll break it up into four bits. So the A part, here we go. Okay, so there's the entire A part. It, ha it really wants to move. It's one of those just movie tunes. Okay, so here is the first phrase. Okay, so we're going along. For those of you who... Um, the, the first few notes follow a G arpeggio, if you're familiar with that. So there is use in playing scales. Okay, so we have G arpeggio, but then it switches. And we have that nice F natural, which is part of the scale of this tune. But, so we have these two long notes. First phrase again. That was a lot of explanation for like 10 notes, but anyway. Let me do that a couple more times. Okay, you want to have your bow arm um, nice and ready for this tune because we do a lot of string crossing. Um, try to move your bow arm smoothly so that, and then also anticipate the string crossing so that when you're going from the G on the D string to the open E, that you can be right there. Just experiment around with that. Okay, so that first phrase again, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Um, we have the long notes, we have the bar, the measure that's just the two long notes, G and B. Okay, then we go up to a D and we repeat those notes that we just played. Then you're going to want to hop over to your E string and pick up the E and the F natural. Okay, that first little bit again. I'm going to add the pickup note, which is just an open D. Okay. After that, here's the second part of the of the A part. Um, 
I'm going to play it again. And again, starting on the C natural. And then we have an F natural as well. Okay, you can probably predict what's coming next. However, we're going to review those two parts together. So, the first half of the A part, here we go. I'm going to do it again a little slower. time. So here we go, the first half of the A part, Mrs. McGee. Okay, now, as you might guess, the next phrase is almost the same as the first phrase. So we're on the third phrase of the A part. It's almost the same. There's just a couple notes different, so let me play it. It's a little bit easier than that first one because we just you just leave the first finger down and kind of go between the G, B, and D. So we're gonna, let's see, let's do that whole third chunk. So that's not too bad. Again, Leaving the first finger down there is really helpful. Okay, so the last little chunk of the A part goes like this. I'm going to do that again, starting on the C natural. Okay. So now we have the second half of the A part, which goes like this. All right, so let's try the entire A part. So I'll play it through, let's just play it through two times, and I'll do it at a slow tempo. Here we go. of ornamentation there's quite a bit that you can do with this. Uh, take those first two notes um, you can do a hammer on. You can hammer on each note or you could do just one or the other. You can also do drones or you know you can you can experiment with double stops and see which ones you like, but those are nice touches to add to those first two notes. Uh, let's see. You can do a hammer on there onto that C natural. And then I do a little flick, or you can do a turn. So there are some options there. And then uh, a lot of the same ornamentation for the second half of the A part. Okay, so let's go to the B part. <laughs> 
and again, this is kind of a long B part because it has two separate endings. However, they they make sense in terms of the tune, so it's not much more to learn. All right, so like a lot of B parts, this one goes up a little higher. I will play the entire B part and then we'll break it down into probably six different parts. So here we go. <laughs> So that was the B part twice through, or actually it was just the entire B part. We have two different endings. Um, so the first chunk of the B part, we're going, we're just kind of uh, climbing up high and then kind of staying high. We have a pickup note on the open D. And let me play that a couple more times and go ahead and try as you are ready. And again. And again. Okay, so that was the first chunk of B. Uh, the second chunk, we're gonna play C natural again. And I'm just going to play that a few times. Go ahead and join in when you're ready. And one more time. Okay, so what we have so far in the B part is this. Do that a couple more times. And one more time. Okay, now it kind of wants to go up again, and that's indeed what it does. So let me do that slowly. That's almost the same as the first chunk of the B. We just have that, that last note is a B instead of a D, which it was before. Okay. Of course, and that wants to go somewhere. So then we have the fourth chunk of the B part. Which would be eight bars through the B part. So that's kind of like our first time through. So the third and fourth chunks of the B part. Let me do that slower. And let me do that again. Okay, so that's eight bars through the B part. And what we're gonna do next is we're pretty much, we're gonna do almost the same as the first two chunks. There's just a couple notes in the last um, bit that are different. So let me play that part. All that's the same. All that's the same. That's the same. It's just these last two notes that are different. That's to get ready for our big finish. Okay, so the fifth and sixth parts of the B part. Okay, let's break that down a little bit. So here's the fifth part, which is the same. Uh, is it the same? Yes, it is the same as the first part. Okay, and now 
we're going to go to the sixth part, and the last bit of the sixth part is that little bit different part. And let's break that down just a little bit. Okay, now on the sixth part, it's going to make it a little easier if you can do fat fingers, what we call fat fingers. It's basically you're barring the second finger across the A and the E strings to get the C natural and the G natural. So that's worth uh, trying out because it makes getting that G note a lot easier. Okay, so the fifth and sixth parts of the B part. And slower. Okay, that really wants to go up to the B and that's what it does. So here's, we're gonna finish off the B part, these last two sections. Okay, those last, that very last section is the same as the last section of the A part. So you already know that part. So the bit we don't know You're just kind of working your way down, down the strings. Okay, here's what I want to do. Let's play the part of the B part we just learned. So this would be parts five through eight. So it's like we were playing the B part the second time through. It just has that, those, the last two bars different. So here it is. Okay, now let's do the entire B part. So that will include the first bits that we learned. So I'll play the whole thing through. I'll play the, the entire B part, and then we'll play the entire tune. Okay. the entire B part and you'll probably you've probably heard a few places where I was putting in flicks or drags uh, remember a drag is where you're <clears throat> repeating the note that you just played and then before you play <clears throat> the note you're going to uh, in those places you can also do a flick it's just up to you which one you want to do just sounds a little bit different so you can experiment and see what you like <coughs> excuse me and let's see let's see if we can remember the whole thing so Mrs. McGee remember we have those two long notes to start those two notes okay let's play the entire tune ready and So that's the entire tune. 
uh, you might have noticed I like to add a drone at the start of major sections. It's nice because we have the G note for all of those, actually, for the A part and the B part. And that's a nice way to, to mark out the beginning of those major phrases. Okay, let me know your questions if you have any. Let's play it again. So, Mrs. McGee will play the entire tune at a nice, easy pace. Ready and... have two jigs. You've learned two jigs. Excellent job. We have the Hills of Glenorchy and Mrs. McGee and we learned we talked about how to play Hills of Glenorchy as an air. Um, I also mentioned how each of these tunes is often played in different keys so I encourage you to check out the recordings that I have on the suggested listening and again you can access those over at fiddlingfossilist.com. Uh, that is a new website. Things um, might look a little different if you go there in a few months, but everything will still be there. So um, just... Uh so this live stream is being recorded. It will be available on this YouTube channel in a few hours. So later today, YouTube actually records them and then processes them. And then as soon as that's done, they post it. And I'm not sure exactly when it's going to be, but it will be later today. So you will have a chance to go back and review. And that, that will be up there as long as this channel exists. So it will be there for the foreseeable future. Um, upcoming events. I am still uh, working on putting together a Fiddler's Rally, and all of you are invited to participate. And here's how I've been thinking it might work. Um, contact me if, after I describe what it's going to be if you want to be involved. So again, you can contact me at my website, fiddlingfossilist.com, or you can contact me using the About tab on the YouTube channel, or some of you know me, so you can email me that way. So um, what it's going to be is it's going to be a virtual performance that I will post on YouTube and wh whoever wants to do it is it can do it. What I will do is I will make click tracks and I will prepare a set list and w these two tunes are going to be on there. So we already have some resources to that you can use to, to learn tunes. As I mentioned I'm going to have click tracks available because that's how we're going to have to do it in order to be able to mix everything together for the final performance. So what will happen is um, you would have headphones or, or earbuds or something so that you can listen to the click tracks and play the tunes and then you'll also record them and I will give you some basic recording instructions. Um, it's not going to be difficult. If you have a phone, you can record. So a phone or a computer. So that's not um, anything to worry about. Um, I will give people several weeks to learn the tunes. I'm thinking that we probably won't. I hope to have the tunes, tune list ready and out in a couple of weeks. So maybe around the start of July. And then maybe we can have the recordings in so you would send your recordings to me and again this will all be detailed via email and probably a website 
So um, right now, if you're interested in doing that, then just contact me and I will add you to the Fiddlers, the virtual Fiddlers Rally list. So a Fiddlers Rally is a mass performance by lots and lots of fiddlers playing, all playing Scottish tunes. So I think it, uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And again, contact me if you would like to participate in that. And even if you're not sure, go ahead and um, get on the list and then you can always decide, mm, maybe not this year, and at least you'll have some, some new tunes that you can learn. All right. I don't see any more questions. That's all right, though. Thanks again. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being patient while we got the live stream set up. Um, apparently, there are several different ways to set up a live stream. And when I did this a couple weeks ago, uh, I did not do the one that I intended to do, but we, we got it all going. So thanks again. And uh, stay safe and well out there and play lots of tunes. Bye bye. <laughs>